Good evening, everybody. So tonight, I wanted to, to run a quick test to try and determine two things. The first thing is, at what power level does the fans actually kick on on this inverter? And then the second thing is, when those fans are running, how loud does it get? So let's see if we can find out together. So I'm going to assume that input power and output power will have the fans kick on the same way. And so my plan to test is I want to try and start ramping up the charging from grid on this inverter at different levels to see if we can find a threshold at which the fans kick in. And then when those fans run, how loud is it? Baseline volume levels of the room looks to be about 36 decibels. So I'm in the midnight app, I'm in the battery settings right now, and right now I have charge by grid turned off. And if we look at the screen here, we have voltage coming from leg one and leg two. We have grid power enabled, and I have the grid breaker turned on, so grid power is connected. If you look on screen, you can actually see power flowing from the grid to supply power to loads. There's not actually any loads on the inverter right now, but because it's connected that way, that's how it's showing the power flow. So we're going to start and incrementally go up by 1,000 watts. So we'll start at 1,000 and we'll take it all the way up to 10,000 watts and see at what point do the fans kick on. And then I'm going to assume that that's probably the same level that the fans kick on from a discharge standpoint or a PV charging standpoint, because that's how I've seen other inverters do it. <laughs> power is power, right? So let's turn on grid charging. And you can see in the settings that I have it set to 1,000 watts right now. We're pulling 474 on leg one, 523 on leg two. No fans are running. So let's step it up to 2000. You can see there's no consumption loads. 972 on leg one, a kilowatt on leg two. And we still have no fans. These could be temperature based. I'm not sure, still nothing. So 2000 watts coming from the grid, going into the battery. Let's step it up to 3000. We see the grid icon changed. So maybe 2000 watt increments is each notch. 1.4 on leg two, I, <laughs> I missed what was on leg one. Probably 1.5-ish on leg one. There we go, 1.4, 1.5. No fans. All right, let's dial it up some more. Up to 4,000. One point nine. 1.9. 5,000. So half of the capacity. And I don't even, the, the internal fan's not running either. 2.4, 2.5. Fifty-seven percent state of charge on the battery, with five thousand watts going in. So I believe six thousand is the threshold on the eighteen k PV. Probably the the new twelve k PV. Let's see if six thousand watts is the threshold here. Two point eight and two point eight.
Still no fans. Seven thousand. Still nothing. Eight thousand. I thought I heard a little click, but apparently not. The little one's not going either. Is it not going any higher? This, nope, fans just kicked on. So I don't think I was even going that high. It was, it's gotta be temperature based. So we're looking at 42 decibels when the fans are running. So all three fans are running on the back. And the fan is running on the inside. So they have to be all tied together. And I wasn't really paying attention. It's been only pulling 6,000 watts so far. It didn't actually increase. So I'll have to figure out why it's not increasing. But it wasn't an instantaneous 6,000 watts and they kick on. So I have a feeling that these fans might be temperature based and not 6,000 or less output. When they need to turn on, they turn on because they're too hot. I'll try and verify that with someone at Midnight Solar because it should be pulling 9,000 watts right now and the fans just turned off. I'm still pulling the same amount, but the fans just turned off. Which kind of affirms that whole temperature aspect. So 42-ish decibels from four feet away when they're needed. I'll have to figure out why it won't go up past 6,000 watts because it should be able to pull in up to 10,000 watts, no problem. Okay, so after going over the manual, going over the settings, and just trying to figure out why I could not get above that 6,000 watt limit, I finally had one of those light bulb moments. Light bulb. I ended up looking at this page in my VRM, which ends up displaying the DC power, which gives me an idea of what this is feeding back into my main battery bank. And that's where it hit me. I saw 100 amps. And I'm like, oh, duh. I have one 100 amp battery connected to the system, which has battery communications. And I use that to get state of charge to the inverter. And that has a 100 amp BMS in it. So it's limiting because it thinks that its maximum charging is 100 amps. So that's a little freebie. Keep that in mind if you have some DIY batteries, but you have you know one server rack battery and you're trying to use battery communications. If your maximum charging is being limited, take a look and see if it's that same limitation that your BMS has. So I went in and I switched the battery mode to lead acid. I left the bulk charge voltage, I changed the float voltage, I brought it up from 48 volts to 53.6. So the fans just turned off. We still got that three kilowatts on each leg. The fan is still only running when the unit gets hot. So I did record with my little infrared thermal camera what the different temperatures were when the fans were running. So the front of the inverter looked pretty cool, 87, 88 degrees. Moving up to the top where the heat sink is and all the air comes out, 112 to 114 degrees. The right hand side seemed to be the hottest at around 120 degrees. And everything on the inside was 98 to 100 degrees. 
But now we're to the point that we can actually start increasing values and see if there is a specific threshold of power. So we were at 6,000 watts. Let's go to 7,000. We can see the dial incremented. Fans have not kicked on yet. 3.4 kilowatts on each leg. And you can feel the heat. Especially if you try and touch the back section. I mean, I can hold my hand on it. It's, it's warm, but I can hold my hand on it. But still, no fans. As soon as I hit that 8,000, though, these turned on. Now, is it a coincidence? Did I just happen to switch it to 8,000 at the exact same time that the fans were going to turn on anyways? 3.9, 3.9 on each. We still seem to be at that 42 decibel. So I'm thinking that maybe these fans, there's, there's no low or high when the fans turn on because it's if the fan turns on, it turns on on high to cool it down as quickly as possible. I'm going to reset it back down to 6,000 so that the fans turn off. And as soon as the fan turns off, then I'm going to jump it back up to that 7,000 and see if it turns on automatically. And then I'm going to jump it up to the 8,000. But at least this way I know that the fans turn off at the 6,000 range based on the temperature. Fans just turned off. Let's just go to 8,000. So I'm at 8,000. 3.9. So it was temperature based again. And obviously it's going to get warmer faster the more power you're pulling through it. 9,000. Oh, I'm getting close to being full. All right, my batteries are all flashing at me. So we're going to just jump up to 9,000. The fan just turned off. So switch to 9,000. You see the bar jumped up. Still no fans. If I set it to 10,000 watts, you hear the fans kicking in in the background from the water heater on the other inverter. 118 volts, 5 kilowatts on each leg and the fan does not turn on. So I'm going to reset this back down to 6,000. So to recap, it looks like fans are temperature based and decibel reading at four feet away is about 42 decibels when the fan runs. And I think when I looked at my thermal image, I saw around 120 degrees around the outside section of the heat sink. So I know there's been questions on, you know, when do the fans run? How noisy does it get? So hopefully this helps answer some of those questions. And with that, I'm going to let you all go. You all stay safe, stay cool, and we'll catch up with you later.